Well, I'm on my way up. That's my goal, that's the top. Now, as a rational agent, I have goals. That's uh, part of what it means to be a rational agent. And again, for you know, a major thing about rationality is to uh, perform those actions that do not defeat the purpose or the goal of that action. So, it would be irrational for me to climb to the top of this by, say, I don't know, trying to somersault. Especially with me, it's never going to happen. Okay, well, remember, for Kant, rationality is everything when it comes to morality. And he has some, he has some, there's some pretty serious implications from this. So, one of these implications that Kant's, you know, basically what Kant's trying to get at is, you have to let people make their decisions and be responsible and live with the consequences of their decisions. Well, a question really quickly is, you know, kind of why? I mean, this is real intuitive. We, you know, we think something like this is true already. We may not need to, convi may, may not need to be convinced of this, but there, there's, there's some reasoning behind it. Right? For what, what Kant's saying here is, look, you're a rational agent. You have goals. You try to achieve those goals. And Anything that defeats the purpose of your actions, right? If you're performing an act that defeat, defeats the purpose of that act, is a self irrational. Now, what does this mean? Well, suppose you take Kant's opposite view, or opposite of Kant's view, and you say, well, uh, you know, I'm a rational agent, but I can thwart, I can interfere with other people's agency. Kant would say that's irrational because there's no real difference between the kind of thing you are and the kind of thing other rational agents are. You're all rational agents. So if you interfere with rational decisions, you are saying that rationality is a self, something to be interfered with. That's irrational. <laughs> it defeats the purpose of being rational. It defeats your purposes. If you say, it is fine for me to interfere with the decisions of rational agents, you are allowing yourself to be interfered with because, by the way, you're a rational agent. So again, Kant's pushing on this idea that rationality implies universality. If you are, you know, if you're performing an act, you are willing that that act be made into universal law. And that's just because you're a rational agent amongst the rest. I'm gonna keep climbing to the top. Please, don't stop me. So what does this whole rationality thing amount to anyway? Well, think about it this way. And we've talked about the categorical imperative before and Kant's pushing this idea of rationality. So, what's going on? Well, think of it this way. For Kant, you're doing things every day. Right? You're making decisions and you are willing certain actions to take place. Now, think of every action you make as generating a rule in a game. Right? It generates a rule in a game. And what this game means is that everybody can do and does what you do. Right. So I'm walking along this path and I uh, am stopping occasionally to talk into a video camera. And for Kant, this means that as a rational agent, I have decided this. So I've established this rule that everybody can do that too. Right. It is, I am willing that everybody has the option to stop and occasionally on the trail. As opposed to something like, you know, I, you, you know, if I just kept walking on the trail, never stopping, never allowing any pause, right? That would be a different rule that was set into place. Now, since I've allowed myself to stop and pause on a trail, I've established this rule, and other people may also follow. Other people may stop and pause on the trail. Now, this is, this is, 
this is kind of sort of what Kant is getting at with this idea behind the categorical imperative. It's like when you act, you're making a rule. And you're making a rule for everybody else to follow. And, by the way, um, you're going to be held to that rule too. That's part of what it means to be a rational agent. You're no different than everybody else. So when you will something as a rational agent, you're willing that you have to be accountable to those rules too. So as rational agents, we are not allowed to interfere with other people's decisions. We're not allowed to stop people from making their decisions and doing what they want. We have to let people live their lives. And we really like this idea. We say it a lot. But, might have consequences that you don't foresee. So, <clears throat> first consequence of this is one we, we typically like when it's applied to ourselves, right? First consequence is, is we can't use people as a means to our ends. We have to treat them as an end in and of themselves. Right? What, what does this mean? Well, we are all rational agents. That means, you know, if we try to interfere with somebody's rationality, we are desiring, uh, we are, you know, willing that our own rationality is interfered with. Um, and again, your rationality of an act requires universalizability, right? They're universalized, right? It's, you will an act, you're willing this rule into place. Well, and to will that you, you know, to will that other people may be used, right? Uh, that we may treat it like a means, means that you're willing yourself to be a means. And that's irrational. It defeats the purpose of being rational. Okay. So, when we're talking about Using people as a means, Kant's talking about manipulation. Right? Kant's talking about um, lying. Uh, Kant's talking about um, even just persuading somebody to do what you want them to do, but you know maybe a way to say not for the right reasons. Right? So as an example of using people as an end, or are treating people as an end, I should say, uh, the idea is that you let them make the decision uh, with, you know, the best knowledge and best desires that, that they can have. Right. So, uh, a lot of business exchanges are supposed to work this way. Uh, I go into a restaurant and I order a tuna sandwich. Right. Now, I am paying the, the, the person at the counter money for the tuna sandwich. But that's part of their decision making to accept that money and make the sandwich for me. Right. We both made this decision, we both have goals in mind, and our goals have aligned in this one action. Me getting some food, uh, their goal you know, to, to make a living, and the goals have aligned uh, to, for this one action where uh, I pay for a tuna sandwich and they make the tuna sandwich for me. Now, if I were to use somebody for my own ends, um, I would, uh, you know, the goals would not be aligned. Or I would uh, try to achieve the goal in a way that subverts their goals. Right? So I'd walk into the store, right? walk into the restaurant, ask for a tuna sandwich. They make me the tuna sandwich, and then I bolt. <laughs> I dine and dash. Right? I have subverted their goal. Right? Their goal is to make a living, and I've cheated that purpose uh, by you know, letting them think or manipulating to think that I'm going to give them money for the tuna sandwich. So, we can't treat people as a means. We have to, uh, if we're going to act and we're going to uh, work with other people, we have to work in a way such that everybody gets what they want. That's what it means to treat somebody as an end. Everybody gets what they want. Well, this is the, the first consequence and you know, first uh, implication of his view about respect for persons. And we like this because we want to be respected as a person. And we want our um, goals to be met. But this means that you have to also work and cooperate in a way that uh, such that everybody else's goals are met. And that's hard. Getting everybody's goals to align. That's hard. Well, 
I'm sure everybody has heard of the golden rule and it pops up in, across the planet, across time actually. And roughly, you know, it's treat others as you want to be treated. And Kant's theory, Kant's idea behind respect for persons, very much applies here. Treat others as you want to be treated. Now, since he has this notion about rationality, and that we should, you know, when we're acting, we're setting these rules into place. If we're going to respect uh, other people's wishes, other people's agency, we have to treat them according to the rules that they establish. So Kant's theory about respect for persons pretty much implies treat others as you would want to be treated, and as the second part, treat others as they treat you. Okay. And this is where he gets into his talk about punishment. Right. When we punish the criminal, we treat the criminal as the criminal has treated others. Because the criminal is a rational agent and has decided that as a rule, that behavior is what should happen. So we should respect their wishes. If somebody steals, they are willing stealing as a rule. So we should take their property. If somebody is violent, we are willing violence as a rule. Or excuse me, they are willing violence as a rule. So they should be treated violently. If, we, if somebody wills murder, they are willing killing. Therefore they should die. This is the idea behind, you know, Kant's idea behind punishment. That we are merely respecting their wishes when we punish them for their crimes. And in a way, it's really not even punishment, right? We're just treating them as they want to be treated. Now, Kant, you know, somebody would say, well, hold on a second, right? No, no, nobody who goes to jail for stealing ever wants to have their property or their time taken away from them. Kant would say, sure they do, right? That's what they willed as a rule. I mean, they're a rational agent, and all I'm doing is respecting their wishes. They have willed that stealing be a rule. So, we take from them. And this, this is an interesting position, right? It's not just the golden rule, treat others as you would like to be treated, but adds on the second part of that, Treat others as they treat you. Ooh. 